everybody, welcome to another Tip Tuesday. This week's Tip Tuesday, if I could say it right, isn't confusing, but it might be confusing. So there's a lot of myths and misconceptions out there about RVing in general. So what I thought I would do is tackle those myths and give tips based off those myths. Does that make sense to you, Greg? Made sense to me. Okay, so tip number one. I hear this all the time. I even went around and talked to the salespeople. Greer and I see it on social all the time. The best type of RV is, insert here, toy hauler, travel trailer, fifth wheel, motorhome, you know, class A, class B, class C. The truth is, is it's such an independent and personal choice. Greer and I are standing in, what are we, the 272 hideout, BH. This is a perfect family camper, okay? We've got a bedroom back behind us. We've got bunks here. We've got extra sleeping here. We've got extra sleeping here. This could be perfect for a family of four, family of three, family of two, you name it. It all really depends on your tow vehicle and what you and your family plan to do with your camper. So the tip is don't listen to all that base your decision on what your family is going to do, what your vehicle can so safely tow, I can't talk, and get, get camping. That's all that's important. Myth number two is that RVing is expensive. It can be. Anything can be expensive. It depends on how gung-ho you go into a hobby. It depends on what type of camper you buy. For instance, Greer and I are setting in, what is this, Greer, the Montana... 3791. 3791. You know, it's a $70,000 camper. That can be expensive to some people. The hideout that we were just in was how much roughly is that Greer? Like 20,000? Like $20,000. So, things to consider. Obviously, your budget's important. What your vehicle can tow, which we already talked about. But then like my wife and I made a decision five years ago when we got into camping that we were going to take the vast majority of our vacations with our camper. So we're saving on airfare. We're saving on hotels. We're saving on food because when we get to our destination, we can go to the grocery store. We can stock up. We can have breakfast and lunch in our camper and go out to a nice dinner. Um, campgrounds, not that expensive. Seasonal, not that expensive. But if you're a roamer and you like to do that, there's all kinds of discount cards and stuff you can do to make that experience cheaper. You can go boondocking. There's lots of parks that you can stay at for free. So can it be expensive? Yes. Does it have to be expensive? Absolutely not. In fact, like I said, if you go the route that my wife and I did, it can actually be a money saver for you. On to number three myth, which is RV maintenance is a pain. As you heard from tip two, I've been an RVer for five years now. It's really not. It's not much different than what you do with your vehicle if you take proper care of your vehicle. You're gonna check your tires and your tire pressure on your vehicle. You're gonna make sure the oil's changed in your vehicle. You're gonna make sure your fluids are topped off in your vehicle. Very similar to your RVs. Always, always, always check your tires. When I do my walk around, before I go anywhere, I'm usually checking my seals and stuff around my windows, my door, you can even actually look at some of the seals up at the top. Keep your awning clean. It's actually not that bad. A lot of times when I'm at a campground, I'll actually wash my camper at the campground. So I get the awning out, I wash it, I leave it out, I let the sun dry it. Keeps it from getting mildewed and stuff. And then a few times a year, you need to climb up onto the roof and inspect your seals at the top. It's super easy. It's not time consuming. It just becomes a part of your regular maintenance schedule and it's easy. Greer brought up a great point right after I finished uh, number three, which was if you have a service center near you, if you're fortunate enough to have that, you can always get like a yearly maintenance package with them or you can just visit them, let the experts do it. You schedule an appointment with them, you pull up, maybe you go look around at your next future camper while they're doing your service. They check all the seals for you, they do everything, boom, done. That also includes I don't do this part myself. You know, I was talking about all that stuff I do myself. I do not pack my own bearings. I always bring it in to have my bearings packed. It's just something I'm not comfortable with doing. I'm sure there's a lot of guys and gals out there that will have no problem doing that. But for me, it's just easier to bring it to the service center. Myth four, RVing is for old people. 
Now, I might be a little biased here because I don't consider myself old. Greer would probably call me old. Uh, right, Greer? Yeah. See? But when I visit all these RV parks, we go down to golf stores every year, it is a diverse crowd of people. And more and more millennials and the younger generation are actually coming and buying campers. Like, we're in this 177RD. And Greer, go ahead and pan around and show them. This is a perfect couples coach. It's small. It's lightweight. You can have a smaller tow vehicle. And for those adventure-seeking young people, this is fantastic. It gets you out of the elements, but still at the adventure. So to say that it's only for old people, I, I, I beg to differ. And like I said, I'm probably being a little biased. Just remember, I go back to point one again. It's all about what fits for you. Another myth is that RV parks are crowded. And look, camping is becoming incredibly popular. And it's become even more popular with the whole COVID crisis that we've had. People like having their house with them. They're staying in their own thing. I know it's their sheets, their mattress, their all that good stuff. But that doesn't mean RV parks are crowded. My tip is plan your route, book ahead of time with the place you want to stay. There are some extremely popular places, Gulf Shore State Park. There's a, a RV park in Destin, I believe, where you can actually camp on the beach and those are very limited spots. So you need to plan ahead for your adventure, book plenty of time in advance. But look, I can't tell you the number of times that my wife and I have decided we wanted to get away for the weekend before we put our seasonal spot up here at Walnut Ridge. We wanted to get away for the weekend quick Google search of campgrounds within an hour, hour and a half, two hours of us, book it, boom, done, pull through site, don't even have to worry about backing up and fighting with the misses, easy peasy. So don't think that all RV parks are crowded and you won't have space. Another myth that I hear all the time uh, from friends and stuff, especially before I actually got into camping, I have a truck, I can pull a camper. Guys, here's my tip don't have that mentality when looking at a camper okay you're going to get frustrated when you come to the dealership because you're going to find out that that's not true and you're going to fall in love with a camper like this which weighs 15,570 pounds so you're going to need a one ton truck to pull this especially this is a toy hauler especially if you've got toys in the back like you're just adding more and more weight safety is my tip don't buy something that's right at your weight limit or over your weight limit. A good dealership, and again, I could speak to here, a good dealership's not gonna let you do that. And if you're just absolutely forcing it, they should make you sign some kind of a paper that says you assume liability for that because it's very dangerous to not only you and your family, but it's dangerous to other people on the road. So I guess my tip is one, Know your vehicle, know your expectations. If you fall in love with something like this, maybe you've got a plan to buy a bigger truck before you buy the camper. Another point that I just thought of after the last myth about, you know, I have a truck, I can tow anything, is the importance of weight distribution and sway control. Um, I've always had, anytime I've had a travel trailer, I've always had weight distribution and I've always had sway control, okay? A lot of people will say, Oh, my truck has advanced sway features built into it. I don't need it. Here's my counter to that every time. Why not have the extra sway control? I absolutely loved the fact uh, at the time we had a 1500 Sierra. We were pulling a Puma 32 RKTS, which is around 8,000 pounds. Our tow capacity was 9,800 pounds. Um, I didn't really feel that camper behind me between the weight distribution and the sway. And that included going down the interstate with semis past me and everything else. If you can give yourself extra peace of mind and extra safety features, do it. Don't assume just because you have a newer truck that has sway control built into it, you don't need it. Okay, so my last myth slash tip is that you have to be an expert before you can go camping. That couldn't be further from the truth. In previous tips, I've told you guys to make sure that you ask for and get an orientation. I've even told you to make sure you video those orientations. Those will help you immensely to figure out your unit. But hey, part of the adventure is you and your wife 
or husband, whoever, out and about trying to figure things out and do things your way. It's part of the excitement. It's part of the adventure. It's enjoyable. These things are not that difficult. Don't think you have to be an expert before you can hit the road and start enjoying camping. Thank you so much for watching our Tip Tuesday. We really appreciate it. As always, if there's a specific topic that you would like to see, leave a comment down below. Greer and I'd be happy to do that in future Tip Tuesdays. And as always, if there was something that you want more clarification from or that you didn't agree with or you have more questions on, leave those comments down below as well. Camping season is right around the corner. I think we're only about three weeks out. Everyone be safe, enjoy it, and remember it's all about relaxing, chilling, and unwinding.